Hello, this is Bobby Womack. <laughs> Just kidding, my name is uh, Herbert. This is a little show I like to call Broke History. It's a good show, I think. And you just happen to rub the metaphorical genie lamp and have activated this pre-recorded program. I'm glad you can join me. Our topic today has uh, was uh, heavily requested by me. It's the Library of Alexandria, one of the greatest structures of uh, knowledge to ever grace the planet, which eventually was uh, uh, destroyed. Uh, I'm a big fan of paper. You know, uh, paper is just uh, one of those uh, special things, special tools of the trade. You can crumble it, you can draw on it, you can do all sorts of things with it. Uh, so it's Egypt, home of the Pyramid Boys. Uh, but our focus is elsewhere. It begins with a dream, a dream of Alexander the Great. A bearded man approaches him. There is an island at the northernmost tip. Excuse me. He says there's an island at the northernmost tip of Egypt. It's called Pharos. You got to do something about that, said the old man. Alexander gave him a look of perplexion, and immediately, without question, he and his people took their ships out to Pharos, uh, part of the city Rakotis, a modern place. Nobody on it except but maybe my cousin Bill and maybe the guys from Marcy Playground. Um, Alexander lifts his finger up in a 60-degree angle, uh, exactly, and the city of Rakotis is changed to Alexandria. In a matter of seconds, the city of Alexandria is founded and is considered to be one of the fastest-growing cities, in, according to Forbes magazine. Um, it was then that Alexander received a DM from archenemy Darius III. It read, Nice city, but uh, we're not done yet. So Alexander packed his bags and his army over to Persia, Legend has it, he was a light packer. And part of my French Et allé super saiyan sur le cul de Darius. It was then that Alexander the Great was the most powerful human in existence. He died of malaria. Uh, next in line was Sal Volcano, and uh, he was the most powerful human in existence at that time. Let me uh, go back here. Okay, it was this man. Ptolemy I, Solterre, he was in charge of Alexandria, now under the Ptolemaic dynasty, and won best all around in 323 BC. Under the dynasty, the men will be called Ptolemy, and the women will be called Cleopatra for at least 300 years or so. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Herbert, when does the Library of Alexandria open? It's a Friday night, I got places to be, and I gotta say, nothing happens overnight. Uh, in just a few hours' time, a museum is built, but spelt like this. Uh, uh, now you're asking Herbert, the museum, what about a library? And I gotta tell you, it's part of a library. In fact, one of the first structures built for the library, and um, it, it's also coined the term Shrine of the Muses. Um, a second part of the library is constructed with the help of uh, the HGTV Boys uh, HGTV Boys Boys, Boise Boys, excuse me, <laughs> uh, and a new person is hired to take care of the library. His name was Demetrius of Phalaron. Uh, Ptolemy got uncomfortably close to Demetrius' ear and whispered, I want all the books. I want all the books. I want, I want all the books in the world in this library. All of them. Do you understand? Uh, Demetrius nodded with fear in his eyes. Ptolemy the first dies. And his uh, his son, uh, Ptolemy the second, takes, takes, takes uh, over at this time. Ptolemy the second then founded the library. Um, he received all the credit, even though his father was the one that pretty much designed uh, and, you know, had the whole fucking idea. Excuse me. And, uh... Can't search the ships that dock in your harbor? Well, now you can, with a brand new law created an hour ago to search all the ships that dock in the Port of Pharos. But that's not all, folks. Any book that isn't already in the archival section of the library is confiscated. But don't worry. Our team at the Library of Alexandria will give you a copy back in no time. Texts that were written in, uh, uh, thank you. Texts that were written in a different language were also translated into Greek. Uh, in no time at all, the Library of Alexandria had grown to collect roughly 700,000 pieces of scrolls and books, so many, in fact, that they had to build another section of the library to keep them all. Uh, Fourth wonder alert. Let's build a lighthouse right here in Pharos, said Ptolemy I. But he's dead, said someone rudely behind the screen. Don't interrupt. But yes, it was finally built under his son, Ptolemy II, and it was known as the tallest structure at the time, standing roughly over 100 meters to guide sailors into port safely. Metaphorically, the library serves as an anglerfish, but instead of eating flesh, it consumes books. <laughs> Herbert, you gotta stop. Just a quick assessment before we go on. In 300 BC, there are approximately 300... In 300 BC, there are approximately 300 million people on the planet. That's less than the current population of the United States. Same goes for the amount of people diagnosed with depression, if that matters. There's a whole world that's depressed. But it can't be too bad. Beer is a hot commodity. 
We've got uh, paparazzi on the scene right now. A couple of the most brilliant minds worked at the library. One of them being Euclid, a very important figure in mathematics, known as the father of geometry and looking at things uh, from a different angle known as a perspective. Uh, we've got another hot celeb landing on the landing pad at the top of the library. It's Eratosthenes. Another mathematician and geometrist Euclid looks at him with disdain from the floor level of the library as he too wants a helicopter. And it was here in the Library of Alexandria that Eratosthenes uh, calculated the circumference of the Earth by sticking a pole on the ground at noon during the summer uh, solstice and saw that it created a uh, one fiftieth of a complete circle. As, isn't that, that, that's marvelous. Uh, now for a quick pause to see where we are in history. The Ptolemy dynasty consisted of 15 Ptolemies. Ptolemy II uh, participated in the first Syrian war, married his older sister, he dies. Ptolemy III takes the hot seat, uh, marries uh, Bernice II, not his sister. And there would be several civil wars against Syria after that, six in total. Now I can go on and on and on about how every single Ptolemy married their sister and how incest ran deep as the rivers ran red. Yeah, yeah, sure. But this is mostly about the rise and fall of the Great Library of Alexandria. And I even brought up the Great Lighthouse. I didn't have to do that, but I did it for you. So here we go. Many, many years ago. I'm talking about Julius Caesar days. Oh, wait, you don't, you don't know? The year is 50 B.C., Julius Caesar was a Roman general slash consul and was solely responsible for the following events to come, uh, including the fall of the Roman Republic and the emergence of the Roman Empire. Now, in order for you to understand why the library burnt down in the first place, one must understand the political climate of the time. You see, the audience agree. Julius Caesar, around 49 BC-ish, had a falling out with uh, longtime best friend Pompey, another Roman general, because Pompey thought it was a good idea for Julius to relinquish his army. Julius said, fuck that noise, and infiltrated Rome with his legion and the guys from Primus. Uh, a civil war spun out known as the Battle of uh, Dyrrachium, where Pompey had the upper hand. But Caesar kicked Pompey's ass in the Battle of Pharsalus because of uh, because Alf was present in the battlefield and provided immense moral support. Uh, Pompey then fled Rome and arrived in Egypt. Caesar followed and all the while tried to help out with the civil war happening between Cleopatra the Seventh, that's the Cleopatra, mind you, and Ptolemy the Thirteenth. Between you and me, Caesar was favoring Cleopatra over Ptolemy. Ptolemy, at the desperate attempt to please Caesar, assassinates Pompey and brings him his head on a silver platter. Caesar hated that. You son of a bitch! You stole my kill! And the, uh, Battle of the Nile kicks off. No, no, not, not that one. Uh, the one to the right. Come on, buddy, don't, don't be shy. Uh, Ptolemy the 13th has the upper hand for a few battles, but at the end of the day, Caesar comes out on top. But Herbert, the library, please. I know, I can feel your impatience, booby. So, uh, there's very little known as to how, when, or why the library was ever burnt. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Some say Julius Caesar, while chasing Pompey into Alexandria's harbor, was stopped by a fleet of Egyptian ships, which uh, Julius set fire to, and uh, he burned part of the city down with it, including the library. It's funny because he forgot to write that in his journal, must have skipped his memory. Another reason is the Temple of uh, Ser Serapis which was converted to Christianity years before. I'm talking uh, when uh, my wife and I had our first engagement. The temple held a good portion of text and was destroyed then by an angry mob. Centuries worth of history all held in one place, set ablaze due to wars and negligence. Due to, due to wars and, and negligence. I mean, where, where, where are the LTO tapes when he needed them? <laughs> It's, uh, it's a deep cut. Uh, go to school, donate if you want, and we'll see what Herbert does next. My Hi. wife is making a duckle orange for supper tonight, and uh, as Eduardo Galliano says, history never says goodbye. History says 
See you later. And uh, don't forget to join us next time to see how Plato invented the nuclear bomb.